everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Modern Master Set Review. I am Evan Irwin. And my name has yet to be changed. No. No, it's still Brad Nelson. You're right, it's Brad Nelson. It is. And we're here to talk about all the cards of Modern Masters. Now, we've been talking about the white cards, the blue cards, the black cards, the red cards. What's the, what, the, what are we on now? And wait, there's some, some other, other color and magic. Uh, colorless? Is it, no. Wait, that's, that's not, not a color. color because it's <laughs> defined as not, wait a minute. Hmm. Mm. Well, I think they're going to be green. Okay, it is Because green. they're right here in front of us. Yep. And Sentinel Wood Readers is an awesome card. It is. It's great. Like, in the early game, it comes down and just is defensive at, when you need it to be. But, like, if you get the value out, you get to draw a couple cards. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's green card drawing, and it rewards green for ramping, which, yep. you know, you want these types of cards to do. And as a six mana 1-4 that draws two cards, like, to, to, honestly, that's fine. It is. You're, you're going to feel good about it, to be honest. You're going to be like, oh, sweet, my sweet green creature drew me cards. Like, it's such a weird feeling, but such a good feeling. Yeah, this is like the card that you want in the, the multicolor deck where you have a bunch of different colors because this just costs two green to be there. Plus, if you're like getting stuck and you like don't have all your colors, you don't have all your spells, and you have a lot of big cards, it's just a three mana one four that holds the fort. Right. That This card is supposed to block. It's yep. not supposed to attack. It's supposed to block and it's supposed to draw you cards. It's not a card you're going to pick early. It's a nope. card you're going to get later and a card that you're probably going to get a lot, a lot later. Yeah, it's just a utility. You don't even want a lot of them in your deck. They're exactly. just a good card to, to fill a role in a deck that's trying to do other big things. Right. Don't be playing like four of them because then no. that's just going to look awkward. But you play like mm -hmm. one, maybe two, depending on the amount of ramp you have. And we're going to talk about some of that here. Um, you know, I, I love this card in the yeah. control decks. The control decks, as it were. Super cool. Now, doubling season. It's finally like... Th this is just a card that's just an all-star. I, I, I wish when I was playing and I had a bunch of these and I just was like using them as like napkins <laughs> that I knew like this is just going to be the most unbelievable card in casual magic. It is the second most expensive card in original Ravnica, only to Dark Confidant. And there's a reason for that. It's because it is literally, they cannot reprint it and except in sets like this one. Yep. Because Planeswalkers exist and they didn't exist back then. And this card is broken with Planeswalkers now. I really hope you guys live the dream and someone plays doubling season Elspeth because take a picture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like take a picture, post the URL somewhere. Like <laughs> I would like to see that happen. The look on your opponent's face is yeah. just like, ah, because oh, they're God. just so dead. Yeah. I mean, you could literally play Elspeth and just open it. <laughs> but you wouldn't want ever to do that because Elspeth's amazing. Um, but regardless, doubling season as a card. I mean, then you start to, you know, all of a sudden your mind just goes like, all right, well, it's everything in Modern Masters that makes a counter. But part yeah. of it is just like, they wanted to reprint a cool card. Yeah. They wanted to give more copies of this card out on the planet. It is a cool, it is a sweet card. It's got the uh, the Judge Foil art on it, which is yep. neat. It doesn't have the original art, so you can get different types of arts on it. Um, and, and ultimately, it's just going to be a sweet casual card. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's also helping, like, it's not a modern card, but they get to reprint it to help out the commander. And, like, the, right. everyone in commander loves this card. Just to have more copies yep. existing. They, I mean, like, basically, you, you rare draft this. You know, you're taking mm -hmm. this for the tickets online. You're taking this for the money in real life because there's not a lot of stuff it's going to interact with yep. in the set. It's not a card you want to draft early because it drives some weird archetype. It doesn't. It's just it's just a cool card that is reprinted for a bunch of reasons that are not limited. That's true. Dirkwood Bailoth, however, one hundred percent printed because it's one. Oh, it's so it's it so was good. it was so busted when you would go Dirkwood Bailoth and do Aaron to Femeron, and it's just oh. like turn six is gonna be good, buddy. <laughs> God, We're gonna have so a lot sick. of fun on this turn. <laughs> <laughs> just four turns from now. It's gonna be awesome. Just gonna put nine power into play and attack you. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean this this is a really sweet card. It's not the worst deal if you draw it super late. No. If you pay six mana for a five five, okay. It's fine. Like you're not it doesn't make you feel bad. I kind of feel a little bit bad when I pay seven for the four four yeah. flyer for Ephemeron. I do not feel bad when I pay six mana for the five five. But like this is what you want to do on turn one. It does work with your Fury Charms and all that crap, I guess. It does work with your Time Elementals or your, what was it, Rift it, Elemental? It, it just works with playing Magic and it just comes into play with untapped mana. Like, that's the thing about Suspend is, like, sure, it's in your opening hand and you don't get to do anything with it until turn six, but you get all this untapped mana and you get to, like, be reactive to whatever the board state's doing with right. this card. So it's just awesome. You can bounce and kill things and then have a 5-5 five, five guy yep. to follow it up with. It's super sweet. This is what you want to do on turn one of almost any green deck in the format that I can yep. think of. Uh, Echoing Courage. They only printed two Echoings and this yep. is there's the truth and there's the courage. And it's a good man. Like It's yeah. a solid card. Like For all the Thalids that we're about to dive deep into, yeah. there's a lot of Thalid cards. Way more than I was expecting. 
Like this is the card you want to pump yeah. all of your thalates, you know, or yeah. all of your fungi creatures or whatever. Yeah, and you might even be able to like do something with it with like Sense Enlistment or Empty the Warren, things like that. But for the most part, this is a Thalid card. This is just to like make those cards better. Right, and it has some splash value, like you said, which I think is mm -hmm. really sweet. Um, and, uh, and at the end of the day, sometimes you just plus two, plus two, you're yep. Estermite or something, you know, just because you want to get in more, you want to trade up, like mm -hmm. for the same reasons you play any, any pump spell. Um, good spell, wouldn't pick it early, but it's sort of the mid, you know, yep. fourth to eighth kind of pick. I feel it's good. It's a good card. Eternal Witness is a great card. This this is proven to be one of just the <laughs> best. Like like literally in magic. Yeah, it's just so good. The body is relevant for its effect. You get anything from your graveyard. Like Recollect never really saw much play. It was okay, but you staple a two one body on, and it's enough. And then and all, all of a sudden, it's like sick. And like they've just mimicked that since Eternal Witness. They're like, well, that's just the body we put on these kind of effects. Like Sin Collector is another example. Like. The, there's no True. way that Sin Collector is a 2-1. Um, if Witness had not if it, existed. Yes. Yeah, like, because it shows you, like, super sick effect on top of the 2-1, yep. you know, for 3 mana. And people love it. They value it. I mean, like, this card is, I mean, if you're in green, it's damn near the top. Like, it's super awesome. It combos with infinite cards, whether it's Revelark, whether it's Otherworldly Journey, yep. whether it's just oh, bouncing the stupid Revelark? thing. Revelark? Like, yeah, don't get me oh started. Oh, my God, didn't even think about yep, that. Oh, who is dumb? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. So All right, so there is a card you take over Mole Drifter if you have a <laughs> Revel Arc, and it's Eternal enough. Witness. It's Eternal Witness. Okay, you got us, because... That is insane. Whew, card is sweet. Yeah. Worlds are going to be worth infinite. Like, card is picked super early, does all the things you want, gets back your best creatures, gets back your best spells. I mean, you know, like, what Recollect isn't, Eternal Witness is. Yep. It's awesome. Giant Dust Wasp. They just printed all of the sweet suspend cards. I love, love them. They're yeah. so good. All of them. There's like no other suspend cards that are just good. Like these are yeah. all of them. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. They just took all the good suspend. I guess they didn't. Like, they didn't bring go. visions back. Well, I mean, you know, you don't want visions back. I want visions back. Well, yeah, you Spike. Like, can we just like unban it and bring it back? I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Sweet and limited. It's really overpowered as uh, as we're everywhere else. Y yeah. It's overpowered. No. People didn't even know how good that card was. Like, they didn't even play it for months. No. Like, it took a while. And then, like, it then it found a way in the fairies. And then, like, fairies was like, wait a minute, this card's actually insane. Well, yeah, because like, you just play it, and then you kill two guys, and then you just drop a bunch of cards, and you're just good. I mean, like, yeah, turn one visions, turn two bitter blossom, turned into, like, the thing to do for standard for some non-zero amount of time, and then elves yeah. were just like, don't care. You know, crush you, crush you. <laughs> but that was the metagame back in the day. The point is, Giant Dust Wasp is awesome. Even if you pay five mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer, that is a snid. That is a blue card. A five mana 3-3 three, three flyer is a blue card in green, perfectly suited. Suspend is great. I mean, yeah, no, this card it's is just a really, really good card. Yeah, this card is very powerful, and it's, it's worth picking up. I know it's not as powerful as Air Defender, but it's a green flyer, and those are always really big. Right. Plus, it's just a huge B. It's a huge B, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm scared to death of a huge B. Big stinger. I'm scared to death of little tiny bees. <laughs> little tiny bees that get super Like, I, I'd never run faster in my life except for when I'm around a bee. Uh, it took me figuring out that there were, I think, yellow jackets in the ground, mm -hmm. and then I pissed them off because I was mowing. And then I was running. <laughs> one stung me, and I was like, oh, my God, the pain. <laughs> another one got me on the back of my ear. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Those things hurt Just me tormenting you. Just like a giant dust wasp. You see how we brought it around? You see how we yeah. brought it full circle? Wasp. We, we actually didn't change anything. We just talked about bees. We did. Bees are <laughs> There's scary. no full circle there. Okay, It's fine. a little tiny circle. It's a tiny one, but we went all the way around. You did. Shut up. Greater boss dog. Right. He's man's best fungus. He is man's best fungus. Da, 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 da. All right. All right. So I think looking through this more and more, I think the dredge deck, like, eh. it's still just the same bad dredge cards that it's, we had before. It's just, uh, it's a little meh. Like I'm more excited about storm than I am about. Well, dredge. we haven't gotten to the best dredge card. Well, okay, but like, and we know. haven't gotten to the one. Remember, I was really excited about the one that goes into popper. Oh my god, it's gonna be so all right, insane. All right, we'll talk about it later. Either way, Greater Mossdog, he's a good man. He's a good guy. 
He comes back. He blocks. He comes back. He's no stink we now. That's sort of no. your problem. Like he doesn't, he doesn't automatically kill the things that you're blocking. So if he's trading with cards and you're, you know, dredging only three cards, which is yep. pretty good to get back on the three three, that's fine. It's just not super exciting. It's a mediocre. Yeah, you just don't slam it down. Like it's a late. It's not a. It's a sort of like a mid to late yep. pick. You know, you might wheel it, and you know, no one's going to be like, "Oh my god, I wheeled a greater moss dog." You know, like okay. High five all your friends. No, you're not. It's like, I got four greater like, moss dogs. I'm winning this GP. <laughs> Getting there. <laughs> no. No. Hanakami. Oh, I loved Hanakami. I loved that card so much. It was sweet. It was in the loop with yep. cranial extraction back in the day. And, I mean, it's it's super awesome. You can rebuy, like, your Kadama's Reaches that I think is either next or going to be yep. next in a second. Uh, but you, unless you rebuy all the arcane spells, the Glacial Rays, the Hirobi Whispers, like... You know, it, it lets yeah. you get back all the value cards that are arcane, come back with this card. Yeah, and it, it's really sweet, but I like mostly. I just love the art. It's just like the weirdest. Like there, if there was one thing that it's always a flower in, puking flowers. Yes, like, if there was one thing that I loved about Kamigawa Block was the art was so weird. Yeah, stupidly crazy weird. It's just like they just went in every direction ever, mm -hmm. and faces like like you know faces on tops of things. With tentacle things, with armor randomly, you know, yeah. where there's some blood around there somewhere for some reason. The flowers puking flowers. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, it, art wise, Kamigawa is like a weird acid trip that doesn't stop. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, just an LSD trip. Yeah, like, that's it, all it was. It's just a bunch of strange hallucinations. And at the end of the day, Hanakami is not here to attack for one. No. Hanakami is here to get back your value spells that you've been splicing on, splicing on, mm -hmm. whatever, and get it back. So, like, the Dampen Thought deck can go blue green for this just because it wants to keep rebind it wants to block it wants to rebuy the arcane spell and then you start splicing yep. stuff all over again so this is a tool it's not a beatdown machine it's also a card that because it's sort of so narrow you're going to be able to see it late yeah like you don't have to slam in the hanakamis it's common like you're going to be able to see a bunch of them per draft yep. anyway no one's going to be fighting for these things and you don't want to run a bunch in your deck you don't no. want three or four in your deck because like you, want, you like, just want more arcane spells, yeah. Yeah, like this is like, you know, this is your second copy of all your awesome arcane spells. Yep. And that's all it needs to do. Periosaur. Big fan boom, of this boom. card. It's always just awesome because, like, this was a very powerful limited card. Oh, yeah. But it was it never sat anywhere else. And when I saw this card, it was, like, spoiled earlier. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is going to be a good limited format. Like, they... They built this because, like, they have all these combo decks, but you need to be dead. Like, these green decks need right. some way to get the pressure on, mm -hmm. and that's Imperial Soar. Turn four, he is the man to go to. Oh, yeah, he's just huge. I think it's totally sweet. I have literally been waiting for however long Future Sight's been out mm -hmm. now, for, like, seven years or something ridiculous, for them to make the, the block around this. Where is the block yeah. where you have to spend only basic mana, only basic lands to blah, blah, blah? Like... You know, the, there was a couple months ago where I was like, you know, wouldn't it be cool if Theros, or what, what was going to be Theros, was this type of block, was a block based around basic land things. Because then you have, like, the Ravnica lands fighting with the basic mana land stuff, and there's this sort of push and pull of do you play all the colors or you just play one I of mean, the colors. I mean, doesn't it just, like, doesn't it actually just happen where until the whole block is out, you just have to you just play the old format with all the colors? Well, that then? was sort of the problem. And I get that, yeah. and I understand, and I appreciate that feedback, and that's what Twitter's for and all that type of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, just in my mind, it sounded a lot cooler. I think mm -hmm. in reality, it's probably not that great. But Imperial Sword as a card, I just love it. I think it's great. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's a good, and it, and sweet beatdown this card. Is the, this is the, like, we're going to get to Trump's Little Domains, but this is the, that's that, the drag downs, the, mm -hmm. the uh, tribal flames. Like, right. you don't want to be playing the vivids that we're going to see later on. Uh, you just want to be playing all the basic lands, and even if you're multicolor, it doesn't hurt that. It doesn't impact that. Yeah. You don't need to tap four forest for this. That's literally two. what I was about to say. Yeah. It doesn't say you have to produce by basic forests. It says yeah. basic lands. Yep. So two of them have to be forests. It's a good thing, you know, like green fixes all your other mana, mm -hmm. and then a Sword comes down, and then boom, 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 and we'll talk about some more domain stuff. But that's a really good one. Incremental growth, because they could not print incremental blight because that card was stupid overpowered. Stupid. And so at the at the pre-release where of the set, my first three picks in the first draft were three incremental blights. I actually went up to my friend. I'm like, "How many incremental blights is too many?" And he's just like, "I don't know, like uh, seven. I don't know. I don't really know." <laughs> it's so good. 
good. Yeah. I mean, what they did was, you know, a lot of what Lorwyn was, they wanted to make Shadowmoor like the dark, evil version. So Lorwyn had incremental growth, and Shadowmoor had incremental blight. And incremental blight is stupidly One crazy powerful. One of these powerful. things is not like the other. One of these things <laughs> kills three guys. Yeah, it was and, way too busted. Oh, my God, it's dumb. So, like... You have to like, and one of the sort of the, the the restrictions on this type of spell is you need three different creatures. Mm -hmm. So like, sometimes you're going to be that like, I got to give you a counter on one of your guys, but I get the second and the three. I don't think so. Here. Not in the Thalid world. Well, not in the Thal. Not yeah. necessarily in how they sort of made this. But again, yeah. there can be a situation where That's I want true. my guys to get a lot bigger. Therefore, I will sacrifice giving your guy one counter. And sometimes that will kill yep. you because magic likes to teach you those lessons. <laughs> Lol. Um, as for a pick, yeah. If this was light, we would be like first, first big high pick. Five. Yeah, yeah, it's um, insane. As incremental growth, just like back in the day, it's not something you Third fight or over. Fourth, yeah, like, like it's good. It's just not stupidly. Crazy if you good. want it, you want it, but you're not going to move into it. Right. It's not going to make you play green. It's yeah. not going to be like, oh my god, green's open. This isn't or travel preparations. Right. It's yeah. just fine, and it's really expensive. There's Jugan. See, I don't mind Jugan because, like, distributing five counters, especially if you could sack it or kill it in some way, like, like you say it's the worst dragon, which it is, but it's still a dragon, and it's a green flying dragon. And I'm like, not saying, I mean, like, you know, and I, li I lived when it was spoiled, and I was yeah. there when it was played, and I was there when it was not played, um, and I played with it in limited, and, and obviously it's a, it's a really, you know, it's a fine man. Like, it's a dragon, so don't get me wrong. Of all the mythics, you're going to, you're going to put this one in your pile. That's I don't true. know about the windmill, yeah. but you're going to be like, "Am I playing forest? Yes, I would like the dragon. Thanks." Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as impactful as the Kaga. It's not as game winning as Kakusho. It's mm -hmm. not as board sweeping as what you say. I mean, like you know, and this is back when wizards just made you suffer for playing a green creature with yeah. flying. Like you had to pay for it out the yang, and that's stupid. And but as much as you hate on this card, like it's still a four dollar card right now, like in yeah. champions, it's still a, like a nine dollar foil. So like, if this is your bulk mythic, like okay, yeah. And if you're in green, you're still gonna play it. It's still gonna win games, and you just they just make you pay for it in ways that you don't in any other dragon. Yeah, it's good. It's a very very good card. You will like it quite a bit. Now Kadama's Reach. Speaking of good cards, one of like the most impactful cards from its its original set. As well as one of the sweetest arts, I just love, love the art. I just love oh. the like foresty hand. I don't I, like it's just awesome. It's so iconic. Like yeah. thank you, wizards, for not redoing this art. I think this art is actually amazing yep. and absolutely perfect. This is the card that you splice on your glacial rays. It's so good. And it well, this is like this is the card that you play before you start splicing to get you to the ramp and get you enough lands too. Like if you do, yes. Like if late yeah. game you do that, early game you you ramp. Like it slices the dices. Like this yeah, this, card is so good. This is like one of the best cards. Like it really is. Like you you look at card advantage and getting lands right now in Magic is huge. Like I actually am a big proponent of playing too many lands in Standard mm. because the games don't last as long. So you need to make sure you never get screwed. Getting mm. flooded doesn't happen as much because like the only way to get flooded is to like keep a three or four speller and never draw another spell like at all. That's how right. you get flooded for five turns. But like a card like this gets you a land in place to accelerate to and puts one in your hand so you can make sure you cast your big spells. Like this is awesome. Like this is not a oh cool I got a six pick Kodama's reach. This is like first, second, third, fourth. Yeah, like this it is, is like oh my god, what like are these people on crack? I got a six pick Kodama's reach or what? Yeah, that's crazy because this accelerates you from three to five. It guarantees you hit your next land drop. It works with domain cards that it we've lets already you seen. Splash later. It lets you splash later. It lets you splash all these super sweet cards yep. like those other dragons and still be able to play Jugan mm -hmm. and not worry about it. Like. That's amazing. It's a very, very good match. This card. card was fan freaking tastic, and Champions of Gama Gama Limited. It's going to be just as good here. I mean, it was good in the entire constructed format. Yeah, I mean, they, they reprinted it as Cultivate, and lo and it behold, it was it in standard big time. It might even be good now in standard if it was printed. I don't know. There might be a deck. Who Cultivate knows? was good. That's not true. There's like a, everyone just plays dual lands. Well, maybe. Yeah. It's still good. Yeah, it is still good. It's still stupidly crazy, really. I mean, really, guys, this is a really, really good card. Yep. You're going to love it. Cross and Grip. Cross and Grip, also a really, really good card. Not yeah. as good. More, this is like more of an answer to permanence, though you can't let your opponent counter. Like, you, ha it's a must kill. Like, Counterbalance, Vidalcan Shackles. Like, these cards don't all exist. I'm just pointing out with the ones. Like, Sensei's right. Divining Top. Like, they don't exist in Modern. But, like, that's what its job was. And it's just good to have around. 
because whenever some artifact or enchantment gets way too powerful, you've got this Crowson Grip right there to help it out. It exists. It lives. I'm glad it exists. It's just a more interesting naturalize. Yeah. You know, like naturalize by itself would have been boring. Mm -hmm. Crowson Grip is interesting. That's it. I literally think that, like, you know, they probably had naturalized and they're like, eh, let's make a Crowson Grip. Why not? We have split second anyway. Yep. Who cares? All right. So the next card's one of my favorites. All right, Dredgy. With your right. life it's not from even Dredgy, it's just Life from the Loam is like a value card. Like I like I don't even play them in Legacy, but I like the like Wasteland Lock, Life from the Loam decks. Like it's really fun because once you have achieved it, it's like good for you, buddy, you got me. Like right. I that's okay because like I'm shoving on show and tell, and I'm trying to put Emrakul into play too. And you beat that. I'm cool. Like, now you can just take your incremental advantage and beat me with it. I love that this set just lets me go down nostalgia lane because mm -hmm. me and my buddies, it's a true story, for, uh, let's see, Ravnik, it came out in 2005. Yeah. Um, for my 25th birthday, which is September 24, 2005, that was the uh, pre-release for Ravnica, City of Guilds. So we drove to Richmond, Virginia, which was from my house at the time in East Tennessee, over seven hours. So we drove over seven hours that morning, played all day in my first Star City Games event because I wanted to go to the Star City Games event because yeah. I love Star City Games and yada yada. It was great. I met Pete. I got to meet Ted Knutson. Like yeah. it was really sweet. I got to read. Uh, I, I got to meet uh, Benny. Uh, Benny Smith was there mm -hmm. as well. Um, you know, it was just really cool. It was a fantastic event. Uh, I passed a glare of some tool, which I would never do ever again. <laughs> um, and I remember clearly, like after we got home with all of our cards, and it's like stupidly late. We're all just like, we can't sleep, so we're just like, you know, thumbing through cards, and I'm just like, life from home. I'm like, this card, this card's amazing. And I was just yeah. like, guys, have you seen, this card's ridiculous. And like, I literally just like, grabbed some lands, and just like wrote L, L, F, T, L, L, F, T, L, F, T, L, threw them in a deck with Sensei's Dividing Top, and I was like, you gotta see this. Yeah. And I was just <laughs> like, Top, I don't like these cards. Life from the load, next turn, dredge. Three brand new cards, guys, three brand new cards. Like, this card is amazing. <laughs> Have you seen this card? Uh, you know, and I was just like, wigging out over everything. So there was that there was that moment where I like, I recognized that Life from the Loam was powerful. Mm -hmm. It was sweet. It was around the release of Ravnica. I think this card, you know, the part of this set is that it just brings up those memories. I have terrific memories of Life from the Loam. I've played lands and Legacy before in a tournament. Um, you know, and it's been fantastic. I love this spell, A Waste Sunday, but it's not very good and limited. No. I got all the love. I mean, there is some retrace. It is cool with retrace. Like, yeah. I could I see mean, it. I could see it in a Dredge retrace if, deck. If you're in a green, white, like, aggro retrace thing, like, okay. Yeah. I mean, you want all the sense enlistments, right? Like, yeah. You're probably going to get those pretty late. Or you just want one because, like, Life from still dredges and sometimes can help you do some stuff. Like, who knows? We don't know yet. I just, I. I can 100% say that Raven's Crime is not no. going to get any better with this card. It looks like it, and it feels like it, but while you're so busy like making them discard cards and getting lands back... They're just blah, beating blah, blah, you down. They're just going to kick your butt, and you're yeah. going to lose. So that, that's important to keep in mind. Now, Mastic Myers, they got knocked down a little bit. Got the downgrade. They got the uncommon. It's because the card's just bad. Well, the card looked really good at the time. Yeah. Like, uh, people were really excited about it. I was excited about it. You can look at the old Magic shows. I was like, Ermager, Mastic Myers looks so sweet. But people even played with it. It was just bad. Yeah, they did. Well, I mean, because yeah. green doesn't draw cards, and now yep. green draws cards, and that's sweet. And if it's you know, and if it's gone, you can, or if it's dead, and you play a creature spell, you can get it back. If this blah, blah, game blah. goes eight more turns and everything goes according to plan, this card gained me value. Yeah, like you have no idea. <laughs> like, no, I did, and it wasn't that good. Yep. It's a fine beater. He's not somebody you like windmill. He'll he's somebody you'll get sort of mid to late. Yep. And he's going to be an okay guy. He'll be a that's fine creature. He's not going to be anything you're at home about. He might bash in for three. That's all I got. Moldervine Cloak. We finally hit the popper common that is absurd. Yay! They downgraded it from uncommon, which I don't think was smart because this card was actually very good. Plus, there is an infect deck in leg or in modern or in, excuse me popper that like just got a huge boost. It really did. Like Moldervine Cloak is a real thing now in popper, which is sweet. Yeah. It was awesome back in Ravnica, like, as a limited card. Like, Dredging 2 is nothing. Like, Dredging 2 is basically might as well be, like, Dredge 0. Like, yeah. you don't really care. You're not losing all this value. You're not going to deck yourself. And, and you're just going to have the sweetest preacher bonus ever. Yeah, you just keep making all your bad creatures good because of Mulder Vine Cloak. Like, the card was busted. It was so good in limited. It's going to be good in this limited format. For the hyper-aggressive decks, they're just trying to beat you down. Yep. And this is just going to be a big upgrade for Popper. Um, once the set comes on to Magic Online. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the way that you make, like, face vaulters or whatever, like, not look like complete crap is you play cards like this. That is just embarrassing that that's what you want to put this on. I don't want to put it on. I, I'm want, to to make, I want to make I'm my dinosaur feel more like a dinosaur. Well, yeah, but you literally said, like, this makes bad cards better. And I'm like, well, here's a really bad card yeah. <laughs> that makes better. And you're like, I can't believe you're thinking about making bad cards better. And I'm like, well, you just told me to. <laughs> I'm just doing what you I'm said, doing Brad. Tell me, Brad. Just do it. Here too. What you say? All right. Nantugo Shaman. This is a super sweet card. Yes. I love the design of this card. Mm -hmm. It is brilliant. I yeah. think it's awesome. You can get it on turn three for a three-two, or you can get it on turn five and you draw a card. Yep. How do you feel about that? You got to figure. You got to plan out your game. That's what happens on turn three. You got to be like, how is this game going to end, and right. what do I need to do? Like. The way to ask yourself if you're a tournament spike is, do you min-max? If you know what min-max is, well, A, you're ahead already. But min-max means you want to put the minimum amount of resources to get the maximum amount of value. So for this, you can put the minimum amount of resources to get value, but is that the maximum value? Yep. So the minimum amount of resources you can put in this is a turn and four mana to get the maximum value. Yep. Then you have to weigh that versus what's on the board at the time. Yep. You know, Do I need this 3-2 right now because I top decked it and they're smashing mm -hmm. in with whatever? Or can I wait one turn and get all the value and draw the card off of it? It's a beautiful spike card. It's great. It really is sweet. You're not going to pick it early. You'll pick it mid to late if not really super late because no one really, I think, goes in on this card yep. if they're not heavy green. But it's also a really card you can get super late that people just underestimate. Mm -hmm. It gets you a lot of value. I Good. like it. Call John Becker, Penumbra Spider is back. I love this card. It's just oh. amazing. I just love that it's a two spider. So like when you're against flyers and you just don't want your spider to die, it just doesn't die. The fairy's deck does not want to see this card. No, it's absolutely not. I love it. I love the fact that two the, the fact that a two four black spider creature token now exists. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That is so <laughs> awesome. And we'll get to the the three five tree folk or whatever here in a minute. Yeah. But like, that is awesome. This card was fan freaking tastic in Time Spiral. It remained fantastic. It remained a reason to like be in green mm -hmm. because this card blocks everything, and you get a second one if they deal with and it. And it's very 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 good to get a second two four. I, I don't know how to explain how good this card was in limited. Like I didn't think it was right away, but once you just start playing with it, it's just like. They usually had to use a trick to get around the first one and a trick to get around the second one. Right. So they'd be like, they would two for one themselves every time. So, yep. like, if you get two Penumbra Spriders on the board against the Fairy's Deck, they just can't attack ever. Yeah, they're just done. They just have to find a way around attacking. Yeah. They literally are just like, I have to bounce that with Echo. I just truth. have to draw a Cryptic Command. Done. We got this. Solved. Exactly. Yeah. Figured it out. <laughs> Cryptic Command solves it. But re seriously, high pick. Not over bombs, not over removal, but right after. Yeah. Super good card. Super good card. Yep. Speaking of a 2-5, not a 3-5, When did, Where did the set card come out again? This was Morning Tide? Yeah, I don't remember. It wasn't that good, right? Not at the time, no. It. Yeah. It wasn't that good. This was the one that has the art of, like, the tree going, like, it's oh, got, yeah. like, the, <laughs> I was like, what yeah, weird yeah. art is going <laughs> on there? It's just like, what is wrong? Yeah, and he was just like, he was, he, was, yeah, he was a spirit fingers, you know? He was all with the spirit fingers. I'm like, dude. I don't, I don't get it. Um, no, this art is sweet. Yep. I think this is cool. Like, I love, I love the axe. The axe in midfall. Yeah, because he's just like, running and just think this tree just drops in front of him. Yeah, and he, yeah. he just drops his stuff, you know. And I'm sure a little pee came out. And like, you <laughs> know, <laughs> between this guy and his axe, mm -hmm. there's going to be a two five. You play a forest, it comes back to your hand, and you like, get more. Yeah, this card is such value. And for all the tournament spikes, you, you can't not love this card. No. Yeah. It's super cool. It's, again, for me, sort of a, it's not a super high pick because it's five mana. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, there's other better green creatures and things of that nature, but it's it's very good. It's, it's better Value. Than just it's, a lot of value. <laughs> with a capital V. Rift Sweeper. hey -o. This is a great card. I love that it's banned in Commander. It's just so great that that, that just how the rules work. But this was very good back in the day against suspend cards, and it's going to be good again. Right. So to, to, to be clear why it's banned in Commander, you can make them shuffle in their Commander. Because like it, it's just it, a face-up. A face-up exiled card, which yep. technically in the command zone yeah. that the Commander is in, you can make them shuffle in the blah, blah, blah. Now... This is the part where I feel like they might have changed that rule and like all the commander players are going to be like, you obviously don't know that blah, 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 the command zone is different than the next blah, blah, blah. I have no idea, okay? Yeah, Seriously. That's just why it got I'll, banned in the first place. That's why I got banned in the first place. It might be unbanned now, but either way, this is a card that is here because it fights suspend. 
It fights all the suspend cards. Yep. It fights the Gargadons. It fights the Baylos. It fights the Aaron Ephemerons. Like all the cards that we've been going through and talking about how powerful they are and how good they are, you trump all of them with your bear. It was also sweet when it fought Imprint. I liked fighting Imprint. Fighting Imprint was cool and weird. Yeah. yeah. Cool, like, but weird. You know, Chrome Mox is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chrome Mox does nothing. Nah. Man. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. I like that a lot, you know. I, uh, for, for me, like, Rift Sweeper is just, like, the super efficient bear. It's cool. Like, there's a reason it's uncommon. Like, they just don't mm -hmm. want you to hoe suspend entirely, but they still want suspend well, to be hated on. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is just a nostalgia card for me because I played a lot of times for our block. It was a really crucial part of the format. It really was. Uh, because there was a lot of suspend. Like, Rift Sweeper was a block-constructed playable card. Hell, it was a standard playable card. It was card. an all-star. Yeah, it was awesome. And, like, Rift Sweeper was actually out there to fight on just that card. It was just that good. It really did. Like, you know, you just And the ancestral visions. And, and the ancestral thing that fairies kind of play. But, well, the thing is, it didn't get that far into standard. Rift Sweeper no. didn't. Um, but it certainly didn't block. It like, was a it, big block card, in yeah. In block, it was the man. And so, like, in, in this format, it's going to be super useful. Yeah. You're going to find a ton of ways to use it. You're not going to want to pick it early, but you'll probably also see it late. Like, it's just a bear, and it just randomly hoses things, and sometimes And it still just, just comes down on turn two, even if they don't, like, suspend. It just comes down as a bear, and it's fine. Like, right, like, when you know you're not against the suspend deck or whatever, like, you just... Jam right, it, yeah. Just go. Just attack for two, because sometimes you don't need to get infinite value when you can just yep. attack for two. Mm-hmm. Good man, don't pick him early. Rude Awakening, hey yo. This card used to do a lot of sweet things, and it worked well with Kodama's Reach, and it's still going to be awesome. This is just In a fact, does the very same thing still. Yeah. Still works with Kodama's Reach. Still yeah. is incredibly sweet. And it's still only 8 mana. It's 8 mana for 16 damage attacking. That's like the cool thing about it. Except for the, if you play to land this turn, it has so many tickets. Remember that. Yeah, don't, don't forget that. You can't just turn all your land sideways. Yeah. But this card is basically 8 mana win the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in my cube. It will stay in my cube. I want it to remain there. There have been very, very few times in my life where I have cast Rude Awakening and not immediately won. They either had some crazy trick yeah. or they were preparing for it or for they a just long countered time. it. Yeah, or they just countered yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, like but this. Like countered and resolve is what I meant. Yeah, like, okay, yeah. Or I'm yeah. saying cast it and resolve. So if I resolve Rude Awakening, it's a rare thing that you will actually lose yeah. at that point. Um, like they can't echoing truth them, for mm -hmm. example. This or, is a card that you just cast like this. You just go. You don't even do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have to. You're just like, I'm, and then I got, and then you're, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rude Awakening is awesome. I think it's going to be great and limited, especially if these decks play out the way I think they're going to play out. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those cards you sort of would get, you know, you would first pick or what mm -hmm. have you, and then you begin to work your deck around. Like, you'd want the Reacher Branches. You would want the Sentinel Wood Readers. Like, you want to put yourself in a position, and, you know, Tooth and Nail's come up as well, where, you know, is what you're trying to do cast the super huge spells. Yeah. Now, Tooth and Nail's not even as good as this card in Limited. No, not, like, not even it's close. Right, like, Tooth and Nail doesn't win the game like this wins the game. So, like, this is a card that you just sort of craft your entire game plan yep. around. I want to draw Root Awakening, I want to cast Root Awakening, and then they're all dead. Mm -hmm. And that's normally what happens. Yep. Super, super good. Love it. Search for Tomorrow is another awesome spin card. It's a big favorite of mine, too. I loved it. Like, just play it turn one. So, and, it, and the land comes into play on tab. So on turn, it's just the same as a, it's, a, it's a unique rampant growth. Like, right. on turn three, it'll ramp you to five. But if you have it on turn one, you don't have to invest your turn two into ramping. Right. And then on turn three, you have four mana untapped. Which is totally, totally awesome. Yep. Helps with domain. Like, this was a card back in the Time Spiral block days that Rift Sweeper would counter. Mm -hmm. You know, your opponent would first turn Search for Tomorrow, you would turn to Rift Sweeper, shovel it back in. Like, and sometimes that would cripple them. Yep. You know, sometimes they relied on the Search for Tomorrow, just like you relied on two lands of Rampant Growth, mm -hmm. to make sure that you hit all your land drops and blah, blah, blah. So, this is a really good fixer. It's a good ramper. I mean, like, it, it does all the good things. Even if you have to wait an extra turn, trust me, it's worth it. Yeah, this card's awesome. Don't pick it super high. But you know it's it's you know it's basically just going to go late, um, but it's not going to go super late. No, I, th I mean I think fourth it's going to be yeah fourth to eighth is where it's going to be is where you're going to find it. But it's it's definitely worth it. All right, so here we go, fungi. We're starting with all the fungi, and this is one of the most powerful ones. Woo, four mana, four four. Like, but, but just read it carefully because it doesn't read like all the other ones. Correct. It actually puts a counter on every fungus that you have, not just itself. So like that's the really big thing about this. Sure, it doesn't have an ability to go with its its own sapperlings. But well, that's not its own saplings, but you can still make them. Well, yeah, you can still make them, but that's because it's a tribal fungus. Like, it's there to help all the other ones. Right. This is, I mean, again, just being a 4-4 four, four for 4 with upside, like, yep. 
I, you just can't, those stats don't exist anywhere else in the, really this set. Like, I mean, it's just good. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously there's the overpowered planeswalkers and the dragons or whatever, but like at the, the end of the day. Equipment. And the um, equipment her, her. But four mana, four, four. Awesome. Super yeah. bonus for all your Thalid stuff. But what off. other Thalids is it going to be helping? I don't know. If only there were more, like Sporoloth Ancient. Whew. Okay. And then now you have creatures you control have removed two sport counters and bravery. Ooh. So then you have your turn four, now you have so, your turn yeah. five. And instead of just costing or having to remove three, you only have to remove two. So the first guy puts all the stuff. This guy puts one on himself, then all of a sudden you're getting one every time. Yep. And then creatures you control have moved two spore counters in this creature, so that means all of them, and then it's a fungus, so like, yeah. Yeah. It's it's good times. It gets crazy. It's cool because like, you know, just like you can have the giant deck, someone's gonna have yep. the Thalid deck, you know, and that's I, I think. And the that's Thalid really deck's cool. like seems pretty sweet. It actually does. Like as we keep going here, like I was really impressed. Now but almost all of these Thalid creatures, for what it's worth in terms of limited, basically feel the same. They're not yep. bombs. They're not going to be as good as removal, but they're like the thing that and you, you want a them. lot of them. Right. There, there's a point sort of in the middle of pack two where you go like, am I all in here? Yeah. And you're like, thal, thal, thal. I'm all in here. Echo encourage, thalad, echo encourage. Just pick every thalad thing ever yep. and just go and all in. And to be fair, Imperial Source too. And Imperial They're part of the fungi family. <laughs> Summoner's pack helps you go find them. Yeah, I don't think this is that great of a limited card. I think this is more of just like to help the modern set. Like, it helps the modern set, but like you know, at the same time, and we're going to get to Woodfall Primus and things yeah. of that nature. But like, I'm okay. Like, it was good because it was your second copy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it put it directly into your hand. So when you draw Summoner's Pack and you just go, okay, I'm gonna go find Imperial Sword. Go. You know, play Imperial Sword. Go. Leave my mana tapped because it costs. I just didn't like that it forced it. Pretty. What I thought of Summoner's Pack is like, yes, you can tutor your deck for whatever creature you have, but that creature gains Echo, and I don't know if that's always worth it. I guess it's not bad. It's not terrible. Um, I like the fact that it's just literally it's the second copy of any green creature in your yep. deck. You know, what green creature do you need right now? Like, I can, you know, do I need a Rift Sweeper right now because they just suspended Tysis or something? Or Tysis is about to go off, and I just go find it and get rid of it. Like, to me, the four mana is always worth it if the creature you're finding is going to give that you the value yeah. or, or sort of connect the dots. Like that four mana 4-4 four, four would yep. if you have a bunch of talents out. So... Not like a, a windmill slam or anything, but a card that if you're but in why green. Why is his head so tiny? That's what I want to know. He has such a, a tiny head. A wee little head. He is. It's well, like that robot like from some TV show that I can't think of. Uh, you're talking about the Iron Giant? That's what I'm talking about. That's a movie, isn't That's it? That's a movie. It's an excellent movie. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's one of the best movies made in the 90s. Um, but sometimes green creatures have small brains. Aww. Don't pick it super early. Not over bombs or removal, no. but beyond that, it, again, it's the second creature, second copy of any green yep. creature you got, and that's powerful. Sylvan Bounty, our last basic land cycler. Oh, the final one and the worst one. I mean, gaining eight life isn't bad, but like it's closer to time walk than you think. And no, I agree. It is. It is close to a time walk. It can really hurt people because like they think they're like, what could he have? Like what kind of trick, what kind of whatever. They're not thinking gaining eight life. Like that's right. just a very unique effect. So when they attack you, you can just like gain eight life and swing back at them. Yeah, there was a, th there was some cards, um, you know, from these last few sets when we went over and ev whenever something would gain seven or more life, seven or more life was sort of like, that's like the threshold. Like if you're gaining seven or more life, you've time walked. Mm -hmm. Most people, most creatures can deal around seven damage, at least in my long-term experience, yeah. and that gain seven life just sort of bought you that second turn. The fact that this is an instant allows you to do it at the end of their turn or in response to their attack or in response to their super combat mm -hmm. trick, you know what I mean? Like, you know, oh, you didn't block my guys, blah, 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 super pump spell, and you go, okay, okay, gain eight life, you know, and then they go like, what's that card do again? And they read it, and they feel bad. And then you new and tap and you smash them. We got a reader. Oh, we got a reader, boys, and that's exactly <laughs> what they're going to do. And in the meantime, it's still a basic land cycler. Yep. It's still good. It's good early. It's good late. Like all the basic land cyclers, as we've seen, are just good. Now the white one is the worst one. I feel. I don't even know if this is actually worse. I feel like this might actually be better than the white one. It probably is. Because the, the white, white one, one never really guys, did. Yeah. It never really did much. Like, yeah. you didn't really have all that stupid mana for it, whereas this, you can justify it. Red yeah. one, obviously. Black one, you could say, well, now I want to drain. You know, yeah. like, and the blue one's obviously terrific. So, Sylvan Bounty, surprisingly good. Don't pick it early, but if you're in the domain slash control slash, you know, uh, the sort of the green deck. All right. I like this card yeah. a lot. 
It's a good card. It's always was. Tom this card. Yeah. I mean, it's not that great. Like, yeah, I mean, at least we can tell that it's actually a face and a mouth. Like, I will admit, it kind of took me forever to figure out what in the hell was going on. Yeah, in the it, card. it took me like I was like playing Moto, and my phone was taking forever, and I just like I have this habit. Like, if you all watch any of my videos, you can tell I just like make all the cards big at one time, and I'm bored, and I read the flavor text, and I start looking at the art, and I look, and I'm like, wait, oh. My Oh, he's, that's he's, a, a big mouth. mouth coming out you. I had no, I mean, I didn't yeah. know what in the hell was going on with that thing for the longest time. And then finally I just kind of figured out, sort of, kind of. Yeah. And now it's a bit more clear. Essentially, the first Tarm Tarmogoyf picture was, like, from the perspective of that guy on the ground in front of him. Whereas now, like, you can actually kind of back up and see it's... It, it's like, a deer. Or a deer or whatever. Yeah. You know, but, like, that, that figure down there. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, w what is there to say about Tarmogoyf that hasn't already been said? Like... It's insane. It's expensive. You just opened a hundo. Congratulations. Um, if you opened a foil one, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, like four or five hundred bucks right there. Like it's dumb. Uh, you know, like Wizards. It's one of the most powerful cards in all, all formats. Yep, of all magic. It's the most undercosted creature. Uh, power to toughness to convert mana cost of all time. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we can just run out all the things. Um, my favorite bit about Tarmogoyf in terms of nostalgia is you can go back and look at BDM's, uh, one of BDM's columns right after Tarmogoyf came out, and mm -hmm. he has an interview with me in it, and I'm talking about, uh, you know, the new set, and I'm like, I got a feeling about this card, Tarmogoyf, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's pretty sweet, and I was talking all about using um, uh, the the card where you can uh, cycle it by sacrificing a land, the green yeah. card. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Edge of Autumn. Uh, Edge of Autumn, thank you very much. I was thinking Autumn something. Mm -hmm. uh, Edge of Autumn, you know, because I was like, you know, you got to work to get the land in your yeah. yard, and you got to work to get the instant in your yard. you got to make a blah, blah, blah creature, you know, that sacrifices itself. But no, no, you yeah. just play magic. And it's funny because in that same article where I talk about, like, I got a, I got a feeling and we use Edge of Autumn, yeah. like, <laughs> then he, he sort of segues that into, and here's some Tarmogoyf decks, you know, like yeah. Red Green with Tarmogoyf, Red Green with Tarmogoyf, like, this card seems really awesome. You should check it out. Blah blah. blah at your next standard tournament, and it's just yeah, yeah it starts <laughs> ruining, running standard by itself. Yeah. So at that Swathstorm, um, Perilous Research Regionals, my mm -hmm. friend came with me, and I like went to Vegas. It was my 21st birthday around then, and my like dad took me to Vegas. So when I got back, I didn't get a test, and I didn't really know much about Future Side. I just knew like I already had my Perilous Research deck. Sure. And he was like, "Well, we were testing this Zoo deck, and we think Tarmogoy is really good." And so like. I had to get the deck ready for my brother to play. And so when we get to the store, I had to buy Tarmogoyf because I had all the other cards. And it had like Sail of Fire. Like they had an actually pretty good list right away, oh, like yeah. this group. Sail of Fires and an Instant and a Sorcerer, Rift Bolts and a Lightning Helix and this aggressive deck. And I go and I'm like, all right, four Tarmogoyfs. And I'm like, I gotta spend five dollars for these stupid things. Like I don't know what. Like, cards aren't even that good. Twenty dollars for tar I don't even know is this good, but like I don't even want them, but I have to buy them for my brother because he wants to play and he's only like 12. And, Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I get home, and the next, like, Friday, I look at Star City Games, and I'm like, $25? And then it's just like... Went up and up and up, and then it kind of, like, hit this ceiling. Then then it kind of went down, because it rotated out of standard for yep. a while. And then, like, da 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 yep. da 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 It just kept going, and here we are, like, $120, $130 Tarmogoyfs. And they just... Ugh. Ugh. It's just, I recognize and I appreciate what Wizards is trying to do with this set. I want more copies of Tarmogoyf out there. It's weird that there are going to be less copies of this version that exists than the Future Sight version. Well, yeah, like, I agree, but like, it's also the thing... This the foil is going to be worth more than the Future Sight foil, is sort of what I'm trying oh to say. Oh yeah, but the thing that scares me too is like, with all the hype of Modern Masters and all the new players that are coming from Duels, mm -hmm. like, I feel like... Duels is just like these players are going to hit F and M, which is going to be standard. Then they're going to hit like they should hit the transitions that like we did, mm -hmm. standard, limited, right. into the old formats. But like having the set and this promotional set of modern masters, it's like just showing like these newer players, mm -hmm. modern, modern, modern. So now we just have more modern players too. Maybe. Like I'm assuming that. But at that'll the same happen. time, right? But, but at the same time, you know what they wanted was like modern, modern, modern. That's not like going to break your butt. Not going to break the bank. Yeah. And it still kind of does. And not only does it kind of do what? that. It, I it, don't know what you're talking about with these. Yeah. The boxes are fairly priced. It's fine. You can get them anywhere. Walmart's got them. Walmart's got them. <laughs>
Karma Golf is amazing. Win most slam because you bring home $100. Congratulations. And we have Valid. the most weird art of the set. I feel I feel like Direct I just walked into... Kamigawa block. Y yeah, I feel <laughs> like I just walked into like like a uh, online game, like a mass online game. Like that's... This is like the characters are going to teach me how to go on my quest. Like, <laughs> that's what it feels Listen like. Listen to me. Flop, 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 yeah. Flop, flop, flop. Like, what? You must save the princess. I know. It just feels like why not Zoidberg at that point. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I yeah, that's a flower that can attack, I guess. Sure. I mean, sure. it's the most boring of all the Thalads. But you're going to want it. Yeah, you're you a deck, And if you're not, you're going to see it like 13th, 14th every time. Yeah, it's just not that good. It's just not that good. Now, Thalad Germinator, again... There's literally, like, that was the worst. You know, Thalad is the worst Thalad. Yeah. Ironic. But Thalad, anything else, is generally pretty good. The three mana, two, two. You know, th this to me, again, like, you got to be all in. Yeah. And if you're all in, you're going to have tons of onboard tricks for your opponent to play around. And just so you remember, when you are hunting, you can turn invisible. Oh. Because you can. Because you're a predator. Because mm -hmm. it's totally, like, just a pre actual just predator. I guess I don't, I don't just get covered in random stuff. I don't know what's going on with his neck right there, and and that that ooze stuff that's coming yeah, out. Yeah, I don't I don't know. It's just like the weirdest art. It's like I don't get how they why they had to update that art. Like they kept all the other ones from Time Spiral Block, but they just didn't keep this one. <laughs> like, it's just like this one has to look I mean, way different. Art description, you know, keep it weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, they kept it. All right. <laughs> like the 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 value of this card in terms of when you're when you're drafting it only relies on how good your other thousands in your deck yeah. are. How many do you have? Like in pack three, this if you don't have any thousands, this card's worthless. Yep. You know, it doesn't do anything for you. But if you got a bunch of thousands, like this is like, oh sweet, yeah, get there. You want the thousand chain, you want it to sort of go nuts. They've mm -hmm. given you all the tools to go nuts because God knows there's enough power everywhere else in the set. So they kept going. Like, for example, Thalad Shell Dweller. Like, they're basically not exactly on the same pick order because mm -hmm. Shell Dweller is worse. But, you know, they're, they're similar. In and that. you're trying to curve, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, when you're the Thalad deck, at, at some point, this becomes Windmill. You know, mm -hmm. you're like, looking, looking, looking. All right, there's a Thalad. Got it. All right, here you go. Yeah. Like, looking, looking, looking. All right, there's a Thalad. All right, here you go. Like, you know, you just, you just want to, you want multiples of these. Multiple of these cards are fine for what it's worth. Like, two Thalad Shell Dwellers is cool. Well, especially if you hit, hit the ones that only remove two counters or get two counters a turn. Like, these are very important. And you want, like, when you have one of each of those in play, you just want every card you draw to be a thousand because yes. every then card you, you just get way more sapperlings. Right. You just get, you know, value and value and value. So, like, the the giant deck is sort of like one way to go in terms of, like, mm -hmm. a straightforward strategy. But the thousand is just like you're all in. Yep. You know, like, giants can kind of accompany things. Changelings can help it out. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah. But thousand's like you're just all thousand. Yeah. There's, you know, you are the tossed thousand deck for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see what I did there? I worked it in. Tooth and nail. That's a weird art. Um, it is. It's also, like, I don't, like, they're rampaging through a city, but the one thing about Tooth and Nail is, like, they're never the same creature. You never go get, you know, Triskelion nope. and Triskelion. Right. You don't do it's that. like two duos. Like, I would like them to be two different creatures running, but that's just a stupid complaint. Well, I mean, yeah, and for me, I just think of, I, I mean, whatever, I mean, the classic art on the Mirrodin Tooth and Nail. Yeah. I mean, with the weird snake thing in the face mm -hmm. or the worm and the teeth and all that type of stuff. You know, and then it's like, well, two bulls in the city. All right, All right two that's bulls. In fine, the city. boring, whatever. Thanks. We'll take uh, it. In in these types of environments, in these limited environments, it helps you go find your bombs. That's oh. what it does. Like as a card, it's good. It's just really expensive. Um, I think you can put yourself in a situation where you can make this happen with your Sentinel Wood Readers and your Thalads and whatever. Like you can. You can hold the game off, but I would rather hold the game off for Rude Awakening, like we were talking about earlier, yeah. and not this card. Or even Tromp the Domains. Like, right. Like, this is just not the card that's going to win you the game like those two cards Well, I, I mean, Tooth and Nail is just a card that people like. Like, right. I think, like, the, some of this is fan favorites. Like, people want these things to work. Like This is much like Doubling Season. And, and Dragon Storm. Yes. Like, there's things people just want to happen. Like, don't look at this and be like, can I get to nine mana and limited? Because you can't. No. It's like it's actually like functionally impossible to get to nine or ten mana, like in a game of Magic. Like you will get to those points when you play. There are the but outlier you don't play matches. To them. Right. There's the outlier matches where you can get to them. Yeah. But normally something's gone terribly wrong. Yeah. Like you don't want it to be everything went right and I ramped to nine. Like, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> like that doesn't really compute. There's not enough mana dorks in the set. Like a lot of times, what happens with when you're building, you know, a cube or a limited environment mm -hmm. like they did here. They, they, like the green is just has infinite ramp. 
and yep. green's power, and it is in my cube right now in terms of how it's designed, I've got like all the one mana, one one guys that tap for mana. Like all mm -hmm. of them. Every single one. Elves of Deep Shadow. And there's going to be a new one. And there's going to be Elvish Mystic and M14, which is going to be sweet. But that's what they do. And that's where cards like Tooth and Nail shine. Because mm -hmm. I can get ahead of you so fast. Mana Dork and a Kadama's Reach into whatever. Then I can Tooth and Nail. Or then I can Root Awakening. Whereas in this set, it's like, it's a cool fan favorite. It's a it's a Blood Moon. You know, it's a doubling season. It's a Dragon Storm. It's a Tooth and Nail. You pick it up for value. Tromp the domains you pick because it wins the game. Yes, this this is your other tribal effect. Like it's a, it's got domain on it. It's super powerful uh, when you have Kratomus Reach and uh, Search for Tomorrow. Like yeah. these are these are where you go. And like with your Thalid, you could do Thalid. You could do Imperial Source. You can do whatever kind of creatures because whatever's in play is going to get plus four plus four and trample. It's amazing. This card just yep. ended games back in the day, and that's exactly what's going to do here. You know, there are certain cards in limited that you need. And there's certain effects that you need that just in the game. Mm -hmm. Like at some point you need the rogues passage type cards where like something's gotta get in. And when I play, you know, I played some bad cubes and I've talked about this before mm -hmm. on set reviews where how you can tell a bad cube or a bad limited environment is that it just turns into stalemates. Yep. It's stalemate versus stalemate, and that is really boring. Like, as much as people complain about like, I wish games of magic lasted longer and dear, no, you don't. <laughs> Seriously, like it's not like R and D hasn't tested longer games. Like they know yeah. how good a game, how good Magic is when it's you know five to seven turns or it's seven to nine turns or whatever. And ultimately, it's these cards that allow you to say like, all right, we're all done here. Like yep. trump the domains for four and bleh. and when you have all Thalids, like that makes your Thalids insane. Yeah. So it all kind of coalesces together when you see how these cards work. You search for tomorrow, you Kudama's Reach, you play Infinite Thalids, you trump the domains, the game's over. Yep. No, I, I can't say anything else about the card. It's just awesome. It's wonderful. And it was definitely, like, that's the transition. That Around then, that's when Wizards started just making win cards. Basically, yeah. Because we like them. Because we do. And Vertiloth, the ancient, the it's very so tip top of your, well, it's tree folk, but it, I still see it as like a sapling this is just fungus. A sapling. In this format, it's just about the sapling. It's yeah. just a fungus. It allows you to kick or X and get all those things. And, like, that's sweet. It's nice that it pumps sapperlings yeah. and tree folk randomly, which is cool. We've got like now we have three six tree folk that were put into play. Right, and there's your four seven like that's kind of cute. Um, it it's one of those like you know late late game you want to you want to top deck it, and then on, on turn six it's it's still fine because at that point you should be like thal 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 yeah. sapperling 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 play some plus vertical ones. off the ancient and then bruh. You know, like get you. So and when you draw it super late, it has added value. Right. It brings its own army. Yep. Which is about as good as it gets. There's just there's no wrath of gods. You know, there's a molten disaster in this format. That's it. Yeah. But like other than that, you know, what's going to sweep all of your creatures beyond combat? Mm -hmm. So this will allow you to recover from that. And it's not a super Ermagerd like first pick bomb, but it's really good. No. Yeah. It's it's, it's very it's good. sweet. When you're in the green deck, this is usually the cards you want because you have all that ramp. And all those thalids, and this helps with all that. Mm -hmm. So, Walker of the Grove. Another sweet evoke creature. Another man, like really good man. Now, this was, I like this one because everyone was convinced, <coughs> excuse me, everyone was convinced that um, Eyes of the Wizent was going to return because they made the 4 4 elemental token. Oh, and it yeah. like has a Wizent in it. Like in the actual token, it has the, you know, the the, yeah. the bull, you know, thing yeah. looks like the, wi the, the Wizent thing. Um, and. Uh, they're like, brr, brr, it's totally going to be Eyes of the Wise. And then they're like, nope, nope it could also Walker be Walker of the, the Grove, Grove. And that's what it is. So That's really funny. It's cool. I mean, it's if you need a 4-4 four, four man, you're going to make it play it for 5. If you've got all this ramp and you've got a couple of the Kodama's Reaches, you could get to 8. Like, I mean, but you play this card. This is a 4-4 four, four for 5 that has kicker. Like, yes. That's really what you want to look at it. And it's how fine. you frame it. There's not a lot of bounce in the format. Blue, well, blue does have a lot of creature bounce, which does trump this card. But it is just a common because it wasn't uncommon, right? I believe this did get downgraded. I think, downgrade. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it's just a 4-4 four, four for 5. And whenever you can get finally up to six mana, then it's just like a, a really good card. Eight mana. Eight mana. Jeez, Eight mana for you seven much, sevens. Yeah. That's a lot. So for me, if you get flooded out in the deck that can have a lot of ramp, yep. this is the card. It's you're going to go late. No one's going to be like, oh my god, Walker of the Grove, get in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're going to probably see it wheel or even later than that mm -hmm. because no one, I don't think, gives a lot of respect to this card anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Woodfall Primus, our last green card. This card is absolutely sweet. I love how they kept the weird, I don't know what the hell's going on art 
Um, it's it has like a there's like a face thing going on up in there somewhere. Yeah, and he's like shooting dust out of his arms. I don't know. He's like a weird Spider Man, just like he's he's a weird one. I don't really. Yeah. He's a sort of a tree man. All I know is he destroys stuff and Whew. things. He destroys non-creature permanents like planeswalkers, like lands, like artifacts, like enchantments. You know, he 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 handles all the other card types that you want to handle. He is super huge, and he comes back. And he comes back to get yep. you. Like, and he tramples. Like, that's another huge one. Like, there's there's a huge benefit to having a monster body, and it tramples, and it comes back, and it destroys their best non creature thing. And they're always going to have one by yep. the time this happens. Like, by the time you're casting Walker of the Groves and Woodfall Primuses with your Kadama's Reaches, they got something. They got something really good that you want to answer and you want to get a hold of. Yep. So, that's the green cards. We only have one more video left. One video left. Oh no! Now we have to talk about the multicolor cards, and then we're gonna talk about the artifacts. And Only the, like the sweet twenty artifacts that I love. Oh, totally sweet. No, no trading posts on this one. What? You promised what? me a trading post. I did I? Yes, you told me that if we're doing the set review, that there was a trading post I we could talk about. Never tell Brand there's no trade. Oh, sorry. It's not a trading post here. In the meantime, I'm Evan Irwin. I'm angry. Oh God. And I might be back soon with him, I hope, to talk about other cards. In the meantime, we were tapping the cards. So you don't have to.